All right, well, we'll go with it. Um, still a few people struggling to be here uh, thus, thus far this morning, but that's okay. We'll get going anyway. Um, so today we're going to continue into our realm of modeling kind of a scripted set of objects, and we're going to be building what's called a spider clamp. It's a little piece that would hold a glass curtain wall in place. Um, the one we'll draw is a modified kind of simple version of one, but it's going to get us through some more complex geometry and, again, reinforce some kind of key concepts as we move forward. So I'm going to demonstrate that. But before I do that, I'm going to share my screen and introduce the first assignment to you. Let me click on share here. Give me just a second to get organized. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to look here at our uh, assignments. And I'm going to point out our first assignment. This is assignment 201. Notice it's out of 200 points. And the key kind of takeaway is that it's due a long time from now. It's due on October 10th, which is just about a month away. And so I'm doing giving it to you early. You don't have the skills necessarily to do all of it yet, but you can get started and you can start thinking about it. You can start practicing. Um, and sometimes when there's extra time, you can actually start working on it and modeling some of the details. Because remember, we're adding progressively fine levels of detail as we go forward. So what you're going to be do, doing is designing a table and a chair. And I define those in very loose terms. So a table is something you can set something on. So you can imagine a glass of water, right? You can set it on a table, perfect. As long as you can set a glass of water on it, it qualifies as a table. The second part is a chair. And a chair is just something you can sit on. So I have very loose definitions of what these are. Some people take it very literally, make a, like a dining room table and chair. Some people, it's much looser in terms of how they come up with their, their strategies. We're satisfying it. But I want you to have some fun with this. I want you to play around with it. What your materials look like matter. So you're not only going to, uh, I say it right here, you're, you're going to design a high quality chair. You're going to model it well with good level of detail but you're also going to have at least two materials on it. You're going to texture map the materials. You're going to make those materials look good at the appropriate scale. You don't know how to do that yet. We'll cover that coming up. Um, I actually, I think it's on Wednesday of this week. So some of these pieces are going to kind of come into place. Furthermore, you're not ready to do organic shaped objects. You're not ready to do pillows or anything like that yet. We'll get to that. But you can certainly start with the frame of the chair and starting to get things ready uh, that way. Um, what you're going to be turning in is three perfect renderings of the table and chair. So I want three different views of the table and chair. So different perspectives, maybe looking down on it, et cetera, so that I can really see it, maybe a close up. And all of that, those three renderings are going to be due by midnight on Monday, the 10th of October. So it's a Monday due date, not a Sunday due date. That gives you that extra check-in time on Monday morning, just in case, or Monday afternoon, just in case something's not quite looking right. The other part here is that after this is turned in, you'll be required to do three peer reviews. We've talked about peer reviews before. Um, it'll automatically assign them. That Monday uh, at midnight, it'll assign you the peer reviews. You'll get three that you need to review. You'll look at their work. You'll write a paragraph about it. Uh, what's working, what's not working, maybe how they could improve the view, how they could improve the materials, design, etc. All right. I do have previous examples of assignment 201. These are older ones because this is before, let's see, we have to come down here. There we go. Uh, this is when they were still posting on my website. So you can see examples of what people have, have done in the past and use those uh, to help guide you. The other thing that we have is a base file for your rendering. This has a sky in it with a right white ground. That's all you need to perform the rendering. Uh, I used to have you guys set this up and I found it's actually easier to have you go ahead and download that file to work with. Um, just makes life a little bit easier and it'll help the uh, glass, if you use glass as a material, show up nicely. There is nothing more to the environment. I'm not expecting a lot of context. I don't want uh, you know background wall and you know portraits on the wall or whatever. Uh, we're just trying to get something clean where we can emphasize the table and the chair. That being said, today we're going to actually continue modeling. I'm going to jump over to our exercise 206 here. We're going to continue kind of following a scripted set of instructions on uh, modeling. And like I said, we're going to build a what's called a spider clamp. So if I were to Google uh, 
just so you can kind of see what this is. So a glass spider clamp is essentially, this is a good example of it, it's a mechanism that holds onto two panes of glass. And a lot of times it has a little cable that runs through it. Something like this is a good example where we're holding the panes of glass. This strut comes out and then holds onto a cable. Like I said, we're doing a much more simplified version of this. This is probably a good example here where we've got this cable system. This has cables in two directions. We're only doing a cable in one direction. And our, our overall geometry is simplified. We're not building something quite this complex, but that's what we're going to go about building today. So I have samples here, and you can actually see it start to come together. I have a, a, a drawing here that gives us information. And then ultimately, this is what we're building. So I'm going to walk you through the process here of building this. So let's go ahead. I'm going to leave this open. And we'll go ahead and open up Rhino. There we go. We're going to do a large object inches template. All right, let's close off the toolbars except for the V-Ray All toolbar. There we go. Let me make this big. And then I'm going to go to File and New just to confirm that I have a large object inches template loaded. And there it is. I'm going to start in the top view as I start to create this shape. And when I create the shape, I'm going to start first with uh, an arc. So I have lots of different arcs to create. I'll just use this arc center start and angle. And so I know that this arc, and now I can pull up my little drawing here, right here, we've got a two inch by two inch. So the radius is two inches. And I'd like for this point to be 0, 0.00. So to do that, I need to know where the center of my arc is. So the center of my arc would be over two inches right here. So it would be zero, or excuse me, two inches over comma zero. That would give me my start. My beginning of the arc would be at zero, zero. So I'll do zero comma zero. And my end is gonna be pointing straight up. I could do two comma two, or I could turn on the ortho so that it's snapping to 90 degrees and create that first little bit of an arc. Let me do that one more time just so you can see it. I'm using the arc tool right here. The center of my circle is at two comma zero. This is two inches over. This is going to be at zero comma zero. There it is. And now my arc is gonna be pointing straight up. So I'll click right there. So that's the first piece, that little arc. Next piece is actually 13 inches long. Bring this back up. Oops, there we go. 13 inches long. So from here to here is 13 inches. So we'll go ahead and come back to my polyline tool and we'll draw a line. Oh, looks like I have to turn on my end snap here. Turn on end since I'm here, mid and perpendicular. Those are the three I tend to have on. And we'll go over by 13 inches. So I'm just typing in the distance and then I'm clicking to confirm the direction. And then I'll go ahead and continue and create this arc again. I could come over here and say this is 2 plus 13. That would be at 15 comma 0. Or I could just mirror this. Let me type in mirror. We could pick the middle of this line and mirror it like that. To me, that's a little bit faster. So I take this arc, I mirror it, and I get that arc. Next thing I need to do is join all of these pieces together. So I'll select all of them and go to edit and then join. Alternatively, I could type in join on the command line and that then creates this as one object like that. So once I have this object, it's time to start making it a three-dimensional object. So I'm gonna double click out of the top view and into the perspective view. And now I want to rotate this so that it's standing upright. And that's where that rotate 3D comes in. So we've done this before. I'm going to go up to transform and then rotate 3D. And my axis of rotation is at the bottom of this shape. So right along there. So I'll click at my first point. I'll click at my second point. That's the axis of rotation. My reference angle is going up the Y axis right now. 
And we're going to change that from the y-axis to be point, pointing up toward the z-axis, right like that. So I've taken this arc and I've folded it up so that it's standing upright. There it is, standing upright. And now I can use that to start to build more of my geometry. So I'm going to introduce a command called a sweep. And a sweep is a very powerful tool to create like a tube or a pipe along any kind of a complex object. So I'm gonna do a sweep. And what I need for a sweep is I need a rail. It's kind of like a, a railroad track where I need something to follow. And then I need a cross-sectional area. So I need something that represents the shape that I want to follow along this curve. So in our circumstance, if I were to come back to my drawing here, I need a circle that's a half an inch in diameter. So let's come over to the circle tool. It's right here. Now I could use the radius, which is fine, but that means I have to cut it in half. So my radius would be 0.25, like that. Alternatively, if you wanted to use the diameter, you'd look here and I think it would be a two point and there it is, the start of diameter like that. Now this to me is a little bit harder to create, so I'd rather cut it in half. Alternatively, uh, no, nope, I'd be stuck here. So we'll, we'll use our center and then, ah, there it is. Sorry, I knew there was an option. So I've used my center, I picked my center, the radius is 0.25 or I can choose the diameter and then type 0.5 and there it is. So again, I want this to be 0.5. One of the places where people mess up in this is they make this too fat. They make it one inch in radius, which means it's, uh, or 0.5 in radius, which means it's a, a full inch in diameter. So we want it only to be a half inch. So now let's explore that sweep command. So this is going to be available under surface. And we have two options here. We have sweep one rail or sweep two rails. I'll explain those in just a second. Sweep one rail, essentially allows us to say, what's the rail? That's the rail. And then what's the sweep shape or the cross-sectional area? That's my sweep shape. When I hit enter, it's gonna ask me where the seam should be. The default is almost always fine. I'll hit enter. And then here's our sweep options. And you can actually see it start to create this tube for us. So we have two options. We have freeform or we have road-like. Road-like would be if you were trying to create a, uh, you know, like a freeway where you have a cross-sectional area for the freeway and you're creating it where the top stays flat. Freeform follows along the curve like that. The rest of these options are all fine. So we'll leave it at freeform and we'll go ahead and say, okay. Let me switch this from wireframe into shaded mode so we can see it. And there's my two. So this works on any shape. So let me create a shape out here. Let me turn off ortho for a second. And again, this is not something that you'll be creating. All right? So I've created that shape. If I took a cross-sectional area, so like that, and I'm exaggerating this for our purposes here. Say that that's a little bit bigger. I need to rotate this up in three dimensions. So let me do a rotate 3D. I'm going to turn on my quad snap. Just to pull this up. And again, this is merely a demonstration. All right, so there's my cross section. And I could sweep along this shape. So let's go to sweep one. There's my rail. There's my cross section. There's my seam, and now I end up with that tube in its shape. Now, it doesn't have to be flat. So I could take this and modify it, take a few of these points, move them vertically. All right, so now that curve is going up, and I can do the same thing. Sweep, one, or under surface, sweep. There's my rail. There's my uh, cross-sectional curve. Let me hit enter. And now it builds that shape. 
So a sweep, it could be any cross-sectional curve. So if I didn't like the circle, for example, I could change and make that a rectangle. So let's say, something like that. I need to align it just a little bit here. Rotate 3D because I have to fold it into its position. There it is. And I could sweep that. So let's do a sweep one. There's my rail. There's my cross-sectional curve. And I can say, okay. And that then gives me that shape which is again, just a little bit different. So any cross-sectional curve will work. Furthermore, the cross-sectional curve doesn't have to touch or be close to where this curve would be. So I could actually move this away and I could still sweep it. Oops, sorry, wrong order. I could still do a sweep one with that and that, and it's still gonna follow it. It's just gonna maintain distance from that. Now, this is a good place where we can explore that road-like top option. And again, these are all options. It's not part of what we're actually building today, but I like to introduce it as a concept. So I'm moving it back there just for clarity. And let's do a sweep. Sweep one again. There's my edge. There's my cross section. There's my seam. Now, if we change to road-like, you'll see that rather than have this kind of bank along the curve like it does here, where it goes up and around, road like tries to maintain essentially a flat top to it. So it's a different set of options that may or may not be advantageous for what you're trying to create. You do have to pay attention to these corners where they come together. Sometimes you get a weird corner where they kind of pinch like that. That's just because this is a little bit steep as a corner. All right. So those are different options. The last one that I'll explore with you is the sweep two rails. So this is where you would have two separate rails. I think it's easiest to see if I put them side by side. And the difference here is that I could actually move this differently. Okay, let's say I moved it over there. So I now have two curves that change in their position. And if I do a sweep, it's going to follow along each curve and this shape will get bigger and smaller. So let's do a sweep two. My first rail, my second rail, my sweep shape or my cross-sectional area is there. And when I create it, there's my seam. And we'll go ahead and say, OK. And you can see that as it grows, we've got a tight corner here that's causing issues. But this cross section gets bigger as the two pieces go further away from each other. So it's just a different way of stretching as you start to create it. Anyway, back to what we were actually building. Those are all sidebars. Let's delete this extra shape. Let's come back here. And there's our object. I'm going to use Z for zoom, followed by enter, followed by S for selected and enter. And that's going to let me orbit around that object that we created. So the next piece that we need to create are the little disks that hold the glass. So let's jump back to our example here. We're creating these little buttons right there and right there. They should be an inch and a half in diameter. So let's jump back to Rhino. And I'm going to, I have two different options. I could use the circle to create it, or I could use this cylinder tool. Either one will get us there. Let's use the cylinder. Okay, my base of the cylinder, I want to be able to snap to that center. Well, I have a curve in the center, but it's not really letting me see it. So I can look up at it, in which case I can see it. Or I could actually change my mode from shaded into ghosted. And when I do that, I can kind of see into my object a little bit and it'll let me pick that center line. There it is. I'm gonna choose a diameter here of an inch and a half, 1.5 inches. 
If you were doing the radius, obviously you'd have to say it was uh, 0.75. And my end, I'm going to say this is a um, negative 0.25 inches. And it's then created that little cylinder for me. The alternate would be to create a circle. Do it at this end. There's the circle. Again, my diameter is 1.5 inches. There it is. And then I could use the extrude curve. So you're all familiar with that. I could take this and I could go up to curve or surface extrude curve straight or extrude CRV. We want to make sure that it is set to solid. Yes. And we're actually going negative. So I'd say negative 0.25 inches. Oops. Sorry. And there it is. Uh, oops. It did it positive. So I need to move it down. So let's take the extrusion. Let's move V for vertical. And we'll drop it down like that. So to me, the cylinder is a little bit easier, I think. But it's just another option. Now, we need another button on the other side of the glass. So we'll have a half inch of space in between. And then we'll have another one of these buttons down on the other side. So let's take this one and we're going to copy it. I'm going to go to transform and then copy. And this is going to be a vertical copy. So I want to make sure I choose vertical. I could type V and enter, or I could click on vertical here. And if I started from right here, we need to go down by a quarter of an inch plus a half inch. So it would be 0.75 inches. Oh, sorry, it should have been negative 0.75 inches. Should have caught that and then enter. We can delete this original one here, or excuse me, that mistake. And now we have these two disks that are separated by a half inch. So let's practice that again over here. There's my extrusion. Let's go to transform, copy, vertical, and then negative 0.75 inches, enter and then enter one more time to finish. And that then creates our little buttons. So at this point, I need to take this and I need to rotate it so that it's going at 45 degrees. So I need it to come over to that point. So I can take the whole thing and I can go up to transform, rotate. I'm not doing a rotate 3D, I'm doing a regular rotate. I'll pick this point right there. And when I rotate it, I want it to rotate at exactly 45 degrees. So at this place, we want to just type in 45, followed by enter. And now that is on a 45 degree angle right there. So it was the rotate 45. So in order to continue with this, I'm going to need a second piece. So I need to take the one piece here, and I need to cross it with another piece. And to do that, I'm going to take the whole thing. And there's really two ways. And I'll show you the, the modified step by step. And then I'll show you the quick way of doing it. So what I can do is I could copy this. So let me go to transform and then copy. And we'll move it over here somewhere. And then I could take this piece. And I could rotate it. So re remember, it's just regular rotate. And I could say, let's rotate it by 180. Oh, whoops, it was supposed to be 90. Control Z, rotate, 90, there it is. And then I can move this, and I'm using my midpoint snap on that center line on my sweep rail, and we're going to make that line up here. The only reason this works is because I'm in ghosted mode. If I was in solid mode, if I was in shaded mode right here, I wouldn't be able to pick that center point. So it was important to be in ghosted mode so that I could actually pick that while I was modeling, because then I could see this curve. So then I end up with my X. Now, like I said, that works for some people. There is a more efficient way of doing it. And that is that I could take this object right where it is, and I could do a copy. So I'll go up to transform and then copy. And notice one of my options here is in place. If I click in place, it will make a copy in exactly the same place as it currently is. So 
So I'll go ahead and click on in place. There it is. So I have two objects right on top of each other. Before I deselect anything, I'll go straight to rotate. I'll pick the middle. There's the middle. And I'll type in 90, followed by enter. So rather than have to move it, rotate it, and move it back, I can do the same thing in place. The can key there is also? not deselecting. Go ahead. Can you do it also with the mirror? So I could do it with mirror. That's a good. And this is one of those great things in Rhino where you're learning where you can do something a lot of different ways. So the other option absolutely would be mirror. I could type in mirror. I could pick this middle. Now, the solution here is that this has to be in a straight line. So let me turn on ortho. And actually, I think that was one fewer step. So good job finding the one fewer step. And that then creates this part of the spider. So there we are. The next piece, and this is where I start to, I'm going to demonstrate this anyway, but the next piece is that you need to, following these same strategies, create this little piece that stands up. It's this piece and this piece. So it has a um, half inch rod that stands up and it has a donut on the end that has a hole with a three eighths inch through it and then this six foot piece of cable. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, but I didn't write out the step-by-step -step for this part. I say using the same strategy as above, you figure it out. And that's on purpose. I want you to have to figure it out a little bit. Okay, so how would I do it? Well, I'd use the same strategy. Uh, I'd come in here and I'd say, okay, let's do a line. And that line should be, sorry, I don't remember this off the top of my head. Uh, let's just do it at two feet. Oops. Do a line at two feet. There it is. Let's create a cross-sectional curve. So I'll use a circle here. My diameter is a half inch, so I'll do 0.5. I need to rotate that, or I could rotate this line. That might be an easier strategy. It depends on how you want to work. So I'll do a rotate 3D. So let's go to transform, rotate 3D. And let's use that as my axis. And we'll stand this so that it's standing straight up. There it is. Then I'll do it. Take that and sweep it along this straight. It is straight, so it's not too hard to do it. Let's do a sweep one. I could also go up to surface, sweep one rail. I've selected my rail. There's my cross sectional curve. We'll hit enter. And there it's built my little. Uh, straight piece. The alternative to that would be to come over here and use the cylinder tool. We need to start on the ground here. It's halfway in this first one foot by one foot square. So it would be at six comma six would be our starting place. There it is. Our diameter was 0.5. And this whole thing was two feet tall. Like that. So that's an option. You could do it as a cylinder. You could do it as a sweep. Again, I'm practicing sweeps, but it doesn't really matter. So now we need to make the little donut on the end. And I think a lot of times the donut's easier to do flat, but I've already stood this up, so I'm going to have to work on, on creating it. The option would be to build it down below if we wanted to, or we could build it flat here and then do a rotate of it. So let's go ahead and create two circles. The first circle is going to be the outside diameter. And so if we go back to our thing here, our little uh, button at the top is an inch and three quarters. So let's come back. There we go. This needs to be in, again, I'm in diameter, 1.75 inches. And the inner circle needs to be three eighths of an inch. So let's come in here and let's draw a little circle. And this diameter is three eighths. So it's smaller than our half inch. So I have these two circles. Now I need a third circle that I can use as a cross section to do this sweep. And so I can create that using another circle, but this time I'm gonna use this circle creation instead. And that'll allow me to go from here to there 
and create that third circle. So for clarity purposes, let me just hide this temporarily so you can see these pieces as they come together. I have the outer diameter, I have the inner diameter, and I have this cross section. The cross section is flat though, so I have to rotate it. We go to transform, rotate 3D. There's my axis and let's have it stand up. That looks better. And actually in the interest of, of orbiting correctly for you guys, let me select it, zoom selected. Now we can see it. So all I need to do is I need to sweep this cross-sectional curve around one or the other of these curves. It doesn't matter which one. I don't need to do a sweep two, though I could. Let me go to surface. We're going to sweep one rail. You can pick the inner rail here. And then there's my cross-sectional curve. I'll hit enter. There's my seam, enter. And now I've created the donut or the torus to be specific. You have to... So you're saying we have to rotate the middle circle up a little bit? So yeah, this, this circle here, if you're going to sweep it, it needs to be standing up vertically in comparison to the others. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of perspective so you can kind of see it so that the sweep works. The alternative to that, remember there's always alternatives, is there is actually a torus, sorry, it's the next one down here, right there that you can use to create. So it's going to ask for the center of the torus. So we need the center here. Let me turn on center snap. There's the center of the torus. Uh, let's see, the outside would be two right there. And the inside would be, oh, that's too big. Sorry, it's looking for the center of that. That's part of why I don't create it this way because you still need guides to actually create it correctly. Let me go back here. It would be from the center there to the center of that one. And then we create our shape like that. So to me, that's a little bit harder, even though it's fewer steps than creating the uh, using a sweep. We're getting to the same place, however. So let me do the sweep one more time. I'll go to surface, sweep one rail. Doesn't matter whether it's the inner or the outer. There's my cross section or my sweep shape. We'll hit enter and then enter. And that then makes that little donut for us. Let me turn back on the spire that I had and let's do a rotation. Oh, so I'll take the, yep. the stick again. The, two. The, the stick I used for me, I just used a sweep. I did a straight line. No, I did a I did, it, it disappeared and now you came back. Oh, so. yeah. So what I did, sorry, I was doing it for clarity during lecture. Uh, you don't need to make it go away. You could just work on top of it. What I did is I typed hide to make it go away. And then when I want it to come back, I type show and it'll come back. Okay. So the alternative, uh, all, all the the alternative would be uh, to take that. Go all ahead. The stuff that, uh, I, uh, if I hide them, uh, will they all, uh, uh, I will see them when I say show? Yes. For everything to get it. Okay. Hide and show are just turn on and turn off. The alternative to that, which might be clearer, would be to put it so I could take this spire and I could put it on layer one like that. And then I could turn on and off the layer. That might just be a, a clearer way of, of showing it. OK, thank you. Um, I have a tendency to, uh, to use show and hide as a temporary way of making something go away. Uh, because I don't want to go through the effort of putting it on, on its own layer. Okay, so I still need to rotate this torus. So we'll take it, we'll go to rotate 3D. You can see that there's a lot of rotate 3Ds today. And that's a large part of what you're learning. So I'll pick that center. We're going to go off to the side here. And I'll fold that so it's pointed up and down. Right, I could take this and I could copy it on the one that I created using the cylinder. I could have it drop it right there. It doesn't really matter. Right, so I just have two different options. Um, and uh, this was the one I was working on creating, and this is the one that was in place already. But notice that when I look at this, I have some weird collisions. And maybe it's easier to see it if we switch temporarily into shaded mode. See how that cylinder kind of collides with the torus. And down here, if I were to zoom out, 
down here, this kind of sticks through where it is. We need to do some cleaning. And I'll do the cleaning by using the trim command. So we'll go ahead and deselect. And I'm going to switch back into that ghosted mode. I like it for this exercise. And once I have that, I'll go ahead and type in trim. It says select cutting objects. Well, I could be very precise. I could say I want this to be my cutting object. I could hit enter. And then we can get rid of that part and that part, which leaves us with an end where that torus fits nicely on our end. I'll hit enter to finish. And then we can come down to the bottom here. And we're going to do that trim again. So I'll type in trim. Cutting objects. I'm going to use this and this. So I've selected both of those crosses. And we'll get rid of this piece. And then there's usually some leftover pieces in here. See that little surface there? That little surface. So we kind of have to work our way through the remaining little surfaces. I'm looking for the darker black lines. And those are usually the pieces that are the leftovers. All right. We're looking pretty good, but I've got a piece down here and a piece down here. Is it absolutely critical that we do this? Eh, not necessarily, as long as it's not sticking out. But I still think it's good practice. I'll hit Enter to finish. And now we have a nice cut rod. And then our top sits nicely on it there as well. I'm going to get rid of this extra piece. We don't need it. And now I have almost everything I need. The last thing I need is a six foot cable that extends from this little eye. So we can do that by using the circle. Oh, I didn't keep the circle here. So I need to draw a circle. Let's go to, oh, you're going to be difficult. All right, I'm going to draw a line straight across this. Notice that I have quad snap turned on. That lets me kind of snap to the hemisphere of a circle. I can do that. And then I can use my cylinder tool right here to create the base of a cylinder. There it is. But I don't want it. I could draw it vertical and then rotate it. Or if I wanted to actually draw it in plane right now, I could switch my view. And this is a little bit more advanced as a topic. But I could switch into this front view and draw it at 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. So I could say I want it to be 3 eighths. And now when I create it, notice I can switch back to the perspective view, and I could draw this at 6 feet. Oops, I did it backwards. It's going that way. So it's something that you can do using multiple views. Otherwise, you would have to. Come in here. Let me draw my circle. Let me rotate the circle, rotate 3D. Come on, there it is. Let me fold it up. And then we can draw our line from the center out the six feet. And then it's as simple as a sweep. Sweep one. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. Sweep one. Rail followed by cross section. There it is. Enter, enter, enter. And that gives me that steel rod. So it's just another option for creating it. There's always multiple ways of working your way through this. So the next thing I need is actually the piece of glass that this goes on to. And then I'm almost done with this, right? So I'll use my box corner to corner. And I want the corner of the glass to be directly below this spire. So I already know where that is. It's at 6, 6, because our overall thing is a foot square. It's 12 by 12. And then I could say I want this to be at, remember, I'm using those relative coordinates here, 4 feet, comma 6 feet. So it's 4 feet along the x, 6 feet along the y. I'll hit Enter, and there it is. I need my thickness to be negative 0.5 inches, and there it is. It's still a little bit high. It's lining up with the top, 
So let's move it down. So let's take this, let's move. I can go up to transform and then choose move. This is a vertical move. So I'll type in V for vertical or hit vertical. And we need to drop it down by a quarter of an inch. So I could type in 0.25 or I could snap it. And now that is falling in between those little buttons the way we want it to. So my geometry is essentially done at this point. What I need to do is I need to rotate this whole thing so that it's standing vertical. That's where it's going to be. So let's take the whole thing. There it is. Let's go up to transform, rotate 3D. Lots of rotate 3D practice today. And we'll use this glass as our rotation so that it's standing up. There it is. And I want it to be bigger, taller than where the ground plane is. So let's take the whole thing. We'll go back to transform and then move. Again, V for vertical so that it's up above the ground plane. There it is, kind of floating. Eventually, this is going to work like a whole curtain wall, where we'll put a bunch of these together, and it'll make a wall. But for our purposes today, we're only looking for one. So before I lose it, I'm going to go ahead and go to File, and then Save. And we'll put this into my OneDrive, into today's folder. You do want to make sure you save this, because we're going to use this going down the, down the road. This is fall of 2022. I'm going to call this a curtain wall. And there it is, save. Still thinking. Having some issues here. Probably because I didn't download today's folder. All right, so there we go. Now it came back. So if I were to render this, so if we switched render and we went to current renderer and we chose V-Ray for Rhino, Remember, I need to set up that environment. So let's change layer one here to be environment. I'll create a sublayer for infinite plane called IP. And I'll create a sublayer for lights. On the infinite plane layer, I'll make that the active layer. I'll move that check mark down and I'll choose the V-Ray infinite plane button. Remember, it's a rectangle with a little infinity symbol on it. There's the V-Ray infinite plane. Then when it comes to the lights, let's make that active. I'm going to go ahead and create a box to use as a guide. And then I will choose the basic directional light. It's that one with the arrows. It's the last of the light tools. We'll go from low corner to high opposite corner. And then we can delete the box. And now my light is shining on my scene. Perfect. And now we need a few materials to be applied. So I have two different objects here. I have a pane of glass and I have this metal spider clamp. So let's get a little bit more creative. Let's take this pane of glass, let's put it on its own layer. Oops, and I'm gonna rename this to be glass. The clamp is on the default layer. So I'll just rename that to be a uh, spider clamp. We can confirm by turning on and off the spider clamp and by turning on and off the glass layer that yes, we did in fact have those on their own layer. So now it's time to actually apply some materials to this. So let's go into my V-Ray asset editor. Let's open the drawer to the left where we see our materials and let's look at what we have. So in terms of the uh, clamp, we're looking for metal. So if we went into metal here, you can see that we have a whole bunch of different metals that we can choose to pick. Lots of different ones here. I'm going to do this steel brushed. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say apply. Oh, let me right click and say add to scene. 
There it is. Now I can right click and say, uh, apply to layer spider clamp. So everything on that spider clamp layer is now going to have the steel applied. Let's look at glass. Now glass is a funny one because it's difficult to get it to show up as we would like it. I'm going to use these tinted glass as a way of hopefully seeing it. Um, we have our water blue. We also have our tinted glass blue. We might have to try both of them. Let's go ahead and try the tinted blue. Let's right click and say add to scene. And then let's right click and say apply to layer glass. We need to go into some settings. So let's click the gear icon for our settings. And then let's look at our camera. Our exposure value is probably going to be about 14. So we'll dump that up to 14. Our render output here, uh, this is relatively small. We could make this larger. It's going to be a fairly simple rendering. So let's say maybe 1,000 on the small number or 1080. There we go. I'm not going to turn on auto save. It'll be fine. And then let's go ahead and render it and see how it turns out. So I'll click the teapot icon here. And we'll let this start up. So that material seemed to work. It's kind of fake glass. It's not real glass. Getting detail out of the real glass is going to be really challenging. So I'm going to stop this and just show you. So that was the blue tinted glass. If I switch to one of these clear glass, so let's see here. Even if we did the tempered glass here, let me right click and say add to scene. Let me right click and say apply to layer glass. And when we render it, so we get it, it's there, but it's much more faint. So if you want to see it, you can pick the blue glass. You can also experiment with some of these other uh, glass options. You know, if you wanted to, you know, tint it orange or whatever, that's okay with me. So once we have this, once again, I'm going to save it. So let's go to file and then save. And I'm going to do a full render. I click the render. We'll let it render itself out. So down here, we can see it's rendering the image. Pretty soon, we're going to start getting to our passes. It obviously, it takes a little bit longer to do renderings when you have things like glass with transparency. All right, it finished. Let me save this. I'm going to click the little save icon. Now remember when we do that, we want to change our save as type to be a JPEG. If you save as a PNG, you won't preserve the backdrop. Let's go ahead and save it into my flash drive. And this is our glass curtain wall. And I'll click Save. This JPEG is what I'm going to post to Canvas. So this is the proof that I need that I was actually able to create it. You do, however, want to make sure that you save your file here because we'll use it next class again. So I'll go to File and then Save, make sure it's saved. And that's all you need to do. So remember, once again, when it comes to posting, we'll come back to our little exercise here. I'm going to scroll up here. I'll click on Start Assignment. It gives you a text entry field. I'm just going to enter it directly in here. I'll go to Insert, Image. Oops, sorry. Insert, Image, Upload Image. And let me get to the correct class here. And there's my glass curtain wall. I'll go ahead and say Open. These options are fine. We'll click Submit. And it's here. You may find that you want to make it smaller. So you can click one of the corners and make it smaller. Now that's showing up as a little thumbnail. And when you're done there, you can go ahead and click on Submit Assignment. OK, so that's how you're going to turn this one in. Most of you have got this down, but I figure it can't hurt for me to reinforce it. Um, does the light direction matter for this exercise? Great question. No, it doesn't. I did it this way, pointing that way, so that I would get the shadow. If I took this and I rotated it, let's do, hold on, I need to turn on point snap here just so you can see the difference. That's kind of shining directly at it. If we went to back to our render here, 
to me, it, the shadow makes this a little bit confusing if I have it pointing at it. If we swung it around a little bit further, let's go another negative 90. And then I were to render it. It's kind of behind. And again, to me, this is a little bit confusing. So I picked that based on the angle of the camera. Now, if I switch the camera angle, right? If I rotate around this way, maybe in that scenario, it's not so bad, but the light is kind of shining at us this time. So for the purposes of the exercise, I'm not gonna critique how you do it, but this is a good example of how your lighting conditions kind of matter. So the glass is shining from behind this time and we're getting the shadow in the front, just different options. Great question. All right, so that's all I have from a demonstration for you guys today. Uh, we'll pick back up, if I'm not mistaken, it's at 1220 for our check-ins. We do have our mandatory check-ins today, so don't forget we're back on that schedule for this week. Um, you're welcome to stay on. I'm gonna take a quick break, get some more caffeine, uh, and then we'll, we'll come back at 1220. I think that's what, what yeah, that's, that's supposed to be the time. We'll come back at 1220, and uh, anybody that has any questions or anything you want to go through, we'll go through it then. But before I do that, are there any global questions that you guys would like to ask before I let you go? No, I'll say no. Uh, I'll let you guys go. Uh, make sure you come to either the check-in this week or the check-in, or excuse me, the check-in today or on Wednesday, your choice, but you do need to come to one this week. Uh, and I'll see those of you that want to stick around um, back here at 1220.